We are at Dottie's new home. Another SD1 over there. Dottie is looking rather splendid. Has been adorned with new stickers. Period correct, Leyland and associated stickers. She has had a serious deep clean, something I wasn't able to give her. So it all looks rather smashing. Um, also, my mate has completely put all the dash together and all the warning lights and everything. Sent a console trim. And then just now what I've been doing is fitting a little clip up there which sits over the tail of the headlining and holds it up. It just clips over the back of the drain rail under there. I don't know whether you can just see it. That's hence all the drillings from the fiberglass headlining. We have a new problem whereby the fuel level gauge has decided to pack up. So I've just been earthing the sender and watching the gauge go up. That one, uh, there. But um, yeah, it's not happy. So it might have to be that um, we have to take the sender out again. I'm going to try cleaning up the pins with sandpaper as a first shot. But yeah, it might be that we have to take the sender out and see what's wrong with it. Fuel gauge does actually work now after I've cleaned the pins. It's just extremely low on fuel. We have a slightly annoying problem. Dotty has developed a fuel delivery issue. So these fuel filters never fill up completely, but this one is really low even when the engine's running and a couple of times she's conked out for absolutely no reason. So that combined with what appears to be a slightly lazy fuel level sender means that we're gonna pull the fuel filter and sender unit out and then have a poke around and see what's up because it's not particularly happy at the moment. The fuel sender does work, but it's very slow. We've just put 20 liters in it, and yet it's reading just above empty, and it should be uh, at least a third full, so it ain't happy. Fuel filter, sorry, fuel sender and pump unit is there. That's the, the delivery pipe, then it's those six bolts, and then um, we'll get it out. Okay, fuel sender works. That's all okay, it was just low fuel level. There has been a bit of a fail. There's loads of debris in the tank. Some of that is, um, I think, the beginnings of rust. I mean, or bits of rust. It's not bad. If you watched these videos before, this tank was completely flushed and cleaned out. But, badly rusty when I just pumped or when me and my mate just pumped out fuel into the engine bay side we put it into a little bucket and had a look and you can see like a little oily residue which almost it won't dilute or um, mix in with the fuel just sits there and I think that is leftover rusty water from when I drained and flushed that tank so what we are doing is cleaning and replacing the fuel filter um, I'm gonna try and clean that tank again and then the other thing is that I have taken this all apart and there was loads of crap from the old sealer that had dropped in because I'd used the butyl and that had gone crusty and then dropped into the tank which is part of the problem. I'm also replacing the little elbow with another piece of new fuel hose because the stuff I used last time didn't like being constantly immersed in the fuel and had gone a bit baggy so that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna clean it all up and then put it all back together again and I'm going to make a new little gasket for the tank as well. New elbow of fuel hose fitted, new gasket made, and um, sealer. And then we shall try and post the whole lot back through there. Fuel pumpy thing all back in. I'm waiting for my mate to get back from Halfords with some fuel filters. I'm fitting the rear view mirror with its special mount and special chrome bolts and I need to cut a hole through the headlining to find where the captive threads are. So I've done that one side and I'm just going to screw it up. The other one is lost on that side so I'm going to have to chisel 
the fiberglass backing out a bit, which is a bit of a pain. And with such a nice brand new headlining, it's really terrifying because you don't want to leave mucky handprints on it, nor do you want to accidentally cut more of the headlining than you intend. So yeah, bit of a fiddle. Super duper. Didn't damage the headlining, no dents. I did however make quite a mess in the car after my mate spent ages cleaning it up. So sorry about that, but um, yeah, had to be done. Another scary job fitting sun visors. There is where that dirty mark is, that's where I've been poking it. There's a cutout there in the fiberglass backing. So that's where the bolt bit goes. Then around there you've got the three holes. So I'm gonna cut that out and then I should be able to see where the screw holes are and then make tiny incisions for them. One side done. Next side to do. This is what you have to kind of do. So cut a slot, then excavate with a drill until you can just see the captive threads in there and then bosh a screw in to hold it and then find the next one it's quite scary so when the sun comes out and it hits that gold and that green it really does look pretty special and now with added sun visors and I don't think I ever showed like how good that dash looks now that it's all back together again that is going to be the end of this rather brief video. Um, things I did, or we did, but didn't film, put a different alternator belt on because the first one was screaming its tits off, and then reset the timing. Um, the timing appeared to be well out according to the book. It should be with the um, engine warm, the vacuum disconnected. At 1200 RPM, it should be 10 degrees before top dead center and at static it should be six this was well out despite it always starting really nice from hot or cold uh what it's gonna do now i don't know but we shall turn the key and see it did it, the idle is super super low so it's not always behaving itself you can hear how low the idle is but it does start on the button now There's a nasty noise from the viscous coupling, so that needs to be changed, but that will have to wait for another day, methinks. But it's rather a nice place to be now in here. It's The camera doesn't like switching from light to dark, but it is lovely. Uh, just needs all the final little bits put in. Final cleanup, it does have the parcel shelf, that's all ready to go, um, but yeah. So that's the end of today's video and hopefully another time it will be utterly, utterly completely finished, roadworthy and MOT'd and all the rest of it. See you later.